Hello, I'm Tripwire. Welcome to... Welcome back to, I should say. My slow play of Dark Souls Remastered. Hope you're enjoying the series. If you're here right now, you probably have been. We're going into Blight Town tonight. This is the back way, and it is not without its obstacles. Like, they don't just give it to you for free. Right in front of us, you'll see these fucking ogre-looking things. They're not very nice. And they're two really close together. You don't want to aggro them both, so what you can do is just roll into this. It'll alert the back one, but not the, uh, the front one, so... Fight these guys if you want to, or you can run past, just be careful. They have a couple of attacks that swing quicker than others, like that. Or have decent tracking. Um, but there's three of them total. Let's get a little backstab going. Um, they're pretty strong. But we have a plus five claymore, so they're not too bad. They also have a roar. It's supposed to like be intimidating, but when they're doing that, you can just backstab them. Like it's they're completely vulnerable when that happens. Five hundred souls each, not too shabby. They also drop an item called dung pie, which yes, it is what you think it is. It is gross. Believe it or not, it does have a use though. But they're not very quick. They're not very agile. Like getting backstabs on these guys is pretty easy. You can chain backstabs by waiting till they get up and circling around and doing it again. If you know your positioning, it's not that hard. That one I didn't quite get because he was turning, but he did anyway. There we go, Dung Pie. Dung Pie is a weird item. Obviously it is because it's poop, but like... Atrocious fecal waste material. Throw at enemies to build up toxins, but also builds up your toxicity. Although the stench makes it difficult to carry on one's person, turning an enemy toxic inflicts high damage over a period of time. So, the poison status effect will build up in, in you or an enemy. Once it hits the maximum of like the status bar, you're afflicted with that status ailment, so you're poisoned. Poison does dot damage, so damage over time. Toxin is like poison on steroids. If you get toxic, uh, you're going to be taking damage over time, but much faster. It's much more dangerous. However, if you use dung pies, you can toxic an enemy um, and kill them that way. It'll toxic you too. Hang on, excuse me. My throat's bothering me a little bit today. Um, it'll it'll toxic you too, but it'll deal a less a lot less damage than the um, enemy inflicted status ailment toxic. It's a different level of toxic. But anyway, let's get back to it. We have another one of these ogre mans. He's gonna swing. Oh, I didn't realize that was a combo. I guess I forgot. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat clearing. I, my, my throat's actually a little froggy tonight. I really hope I'm okay. <laughs> I got work tomorrow, man. And it's only my second week. I can't be... Well, I mean, and also the world's in a fucking crisis. Like, I can't have them thinking I've got COVID, you know? Imagine if I worked at my new job for one week and, developed, and contracted COVID. That would just be fucking tragic. I think what's really happening is that I've recorded like four of these episodes in a row and I've been talking a lot and my throat's just dry. That's probably what it is. Alright, so here we are in Blight Town. We're on a very precarious platform as you can tell. Looking down, there's just a bunch of shabby rickety wooden structures between us and the, and the ground there. And that's the swamp. That's where we need to go. So uh, we're gonna head on down there. Right over here is a chest that you can loot. Inside, you've got the Key to New Londo Ruins. The Key to New Londo Ruins would only be necessary if we didn't have the Master Key. The uh, the gate we went through is the connector between Blighttown and New Londo Ruins, so we've already done that. This key is necessary if you came the normal way through Blighttown from the other side, got up to this point, you grab this key, and then you can sneak through the shortcut this, this way. Uh, but we don't need that for anything. Let's head on down these platforms. A lot of them, if they're not too far to drop down, you can just drop. Kill these, what are these called? Fire bugs? Chaos bugs? I forget what these are called. Um, they have like, they lick you with like a fire tongue, can deal pretty good damage, but they don't react very quickly. Um, and you can stun lock them by hitting them, so usually you can kill them before they can attack you. Slide on down here, and then just drop down, because it's not very far. Okay, so that dart that just hit me is a toxic dart. And now it's separate bars, see? Toxic and poison are two separate status ailments. These fucking mosquitoes suck. They are uh, one of the scourges of Blight Town, and they will respawn endlessly, and they can fly through walls. But 
be careful. This path over here is dangerous because these guys have um, blow darts that inflict toxin, and you don't want to get toxic. We're not going to fuck with them right now. So don't even go over there. Just come on down. Keep keep going down the ladders. Keep coming down here. Another one of these bugs. Um. So uh, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk anything until we've gotten our bonfire. So I'm going to take you straight to the bonfire if you follow along here. This is a little, a little elevator, a little wheel. And this wheel is powered by dogs. See that dog up there? He's walking. It's actually powered by dogs. They're not nice dogs either. They're fire dogs. Alright, so roll off here if you please. Or you can go all the way down to the bottom, but there's no reason to. Then roll off here. And we are in the swamp. We are on the ground level. This area here won't poison you, but once you step into that sludge, it will. See? It'll build up very quickly. But, we can walk freely, because we have the rusted iron ring. Also, I'm in human form, so I'm being invaded by a dark spirit. I know where she's gonna spawn, I can backstab her immediately. Take out this chaos bug before he causes problems. But, uh, this is an NPC called Maneater Mildred. If you are not in human form, this won't happen when you get here. So, summoning and invasions only happen when you're in human form. However, it's good to get this done, because after you've killed... Dark Spirit, Maneater, Mildred, she becomes available to you as a summon for the boss fight of this area. And we got Humanity and a Butcher's Knife. Got an item off the ground here. So if you die a lot, or, uh... You don't want to deal with it, uh, just don't be a human when you come down here. She won't invade, and you can come right over here. Into this little tunnel, and the bonfire is right here. And then you can reverse hollowing whenever you want and deal with the invasion in your own time. That'll totally work too. Get strength and HP. You come up here, there is one other item we can grab that is not immediately useful, but might as well. It's in this chest. Once again, no mimics yet. No mimics until the next area of the game. It is a dragon scale. Pretty self-explanatory, um, but what it's used for is not, so I'll tell you. It's used for upgrading uh, weapons of dragon origin. Um, the Hellkite Drake, the big old red drake on the bridge, if you cut his tail, you get a weapon called a drake sword. Like, that weapon would require dragon scales to upgrade. And uh, some other ones would as well. So, we can do a little exploring here. Um, you come left out of the bonfire room. There's an item over here. Again, we're gonna get poisoned, but it's fine. So yeah, now I'm poisoned, but poison ticks your health down very slowly. See my health bar? Very slow, you don't really have to worry about it. As long as you've got Estus, as long as you're gonna remain not too far from the bonfire, you can backtrack to it. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna pick up a few items here. Uh, toxic will chip away your health way quick. Yeah, that's concerning. Is there an item over here? Yes, there is. Poison Mist Pyromancy, and these are the robes that we're wearing. It's the Pyromancer's garb. So, Blight Town connects to one other area, but we're not going to go there today. Um, it's okay, you don't want to die to mosquitoes in front of your YouTube viewers, because then you'll, you'll look like a big old dum-dum. They won't even believe you're an expert of this game if you die to mosquitoes in Blight Town. Just look like an idiot. Alright, so anyway, uh, this area leads to, connects to one other map. Um, over that way is actually the boss room. That little, that little mountain, the hill, the little tunnel there. That's the way to the boss. But if you go this way instead, aka left out of the bonfire room again, um, this is the way that leads to the other area. And I'll show you the beginning of it, but it is an intense area to get to. And until we've unlocked the ability to war between bonfires, it's not worth going to. Because then you'll have to struggle your way back out of it. And it is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But I will show you how to get there. It's, it's a really cool thing, and it'll also allow me to introduce you to a new concept that we haven't seen up to this point in the game yet. No, thank you. These leeches can drop uh, upgrade materials. Uh, these ones actually. So we got one green titanite shard from the ground, but these guys can drop them, I think, five at a time, if you're lucky. Um, they're useful for upgrading 
certain weapon types, like upgrading to uh, fire. If you infuse a weapon with fire elemental damage, you're gonna need green titanite shards. You'll see these mosquitoes are following us, following us everywhere, because they're dicks. But if you come up to this giant tree root, it's gonna lead you to a little room inside of this tree trunk. And there's an item. It's a plank shield. The plank shield is a piece of shit. It's actually the shield you start with when you're the deprived class, right? Makeshift shield built from wood planks provides minimal protection, but at a cost of moderate humiliation. It's bad. Like, what would you come up here for, right? What you'd come up here for is what's hidden. So, uh, the Souls games have what are called illusory walls. So, um, looks like there's nothing else to this, and you're stuck here. And indeed, if you walk around, you are stuck here. However, one of these walls is an illusory wall. It's fake, but you have to make contact with it in a way that's not walking. You have to hit it or dodge roll through it. Oh, fake wall. Leads to... A chest. Twin humanities. But, FromSoft is super mega sneaky. And there's a second illusory wall behind the first one that actually leads to the other area. The other area is called, there you go, the Great Hollow. The Great Hollow is you're inside of this enormous arch tree. The arch trees are the foundation of Lord Drawn. They hold up the world, is what a lot of people think. If you come down here, we've got a bonfire. And I just got 400 souls because something apparently died. Um, but look at this shit. It is a long way down. And Dark Souls games are not known for their platforming. So this area is really easy to die in. Um, you don't want to really mess with this uh, right now. Not until you've unlocked the ability to warp. And the trek down is frustrating as fuck for a new player. I will say, though, it is worth coming down to the entrance of this because there's a cool item down here. So we're going to rest at this bonfire. Just in case I mess it up. We're going to come down just a little bit. And if you look down below us, there's like a little tree trunk inside of this tree trunk. And there's an item right there. We want that item. So come down around here until you're facing it like this. And there's other smaller roots below you. And then just dodge roll forward. Now this item is ours. The Chloranthi Ring. The Chloranthi Ring passively regenerates, or passively boosts your stamina recovery speed. And it is significant. We're not going to mess with the rest of this area, so I'm just going to homeward bone and we'll go right back up to that bonfire. Stamina management is very important in this game. And now you can see the, uh, the three green arrows next to the yellow arrow. That's that's indication from the boost we're getting from the, um, from the Chloranthi Ring. So, once I get up here, I'm going to sprint for a while, then I'll stop, and look at how quickly my stamina regenerates now. Look at that. Look at it come back. It's, it's so much better. There's also another item we're going to grab later on that increases your stamina recovery speed, and if you combine the two, they do stack, and it can be really useful. Um, we're going to take this off and put the rusted iron ring back on, though, because we're going back out into the swamp. Do not accidentally remove this. Don't... Select this slot and switch rings, because this will break. <laughs> Be careful of that. The Chloranthi ring, though, definitely worth a pickup. If you're willing to do a little bit of side tracking. So, I'm just going to head right back over to the bonfire. Up here is where you'll actually enter Blight Town from the upper section. See all these platforms up there? The upper section of Blight Town sucks, but you end up down here coming from that way. I don't remember the last time I did up at Blighttown, actually. Um, I'm planning on doing everything in this playthrough, so we'll get to it eventually. It's just, it's optional if you have the master key, so we're not going to do it right now. Because it's, it's, it's bad. It sucks, and, and I hate it. We're not going to do it on account of it sucks, and I hate it. Go ahead and level up one more time. One more again, um... Another strength, why not? So, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep this episode shorter, I think. I wanna give my voice a break, but, um, I think we're just gonna go and do the boss. So, from the bonfire, take a right. Remember that these will have respawned, so be careful. Gonna run on through here. Yeah, the other one. And we're gonna head this way. 
So you can see some trolls or ogres or whatever that have boulders and yes, if you get close enough, they will throw those at you and they will hurt. Around this pillar there is a, an item. A large titanite shard. I believe that's our first large titanite shard. That's the next step up for uh, upgrade materials. So now we're poisoned. And we haven't been to... Um, the Darkroot Basin or the Darkroot Garden yet. Uh, which means we don't have access to... There's a consumable item that can cure poison, but we don't have any yet because we haven't gone there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait this out. Um, actually, maybe I won't, but you can if you want to. What you can do is you can just wait outside the fog go door. You just have to come down here. This is Quaylog's domain. What's it name? Chaos Witch Quaylog. Um, this is the boss fight, and what you can do is you can wait until this poison runs out, top your health up, and then go through. Um, if you don't want to fight while you're poisoned, I'm just going to say fuck it. Um, and again, we see a summon sign. So there's this Man Eater Mildred summon sign. Again, not available until you've killed her when she invades you. So you have to be human for both. And again, we're going to summon. And before the summoning is complete, I am going to go through the white light so that the boss does not receive the health increase. Look away if you're young. Look away. So, Chaos Witch Quaylog is a fucking spider lady who uses fire and lava attacks. I did a bad job. I forgot that I was poisoned and I should have healed earlier. But she has what's called the Fury Sword, which is an awesome fucking sword that you can get if you know how later on. But look at that sword. It's super cool. Does fire damage and physical damage. It hurts. Um, but Manager Mildred does really, really good damage. So as long as Mildred doesn't get fucked over by Quaylag's like, uh, lava attacks, Mildred can actually just do the fight for you if she doesn't get uh, RNG'd. But Quaylag's not that bad of a fight. So that means Nova. You don't want to get hit by the fire Nova when she, like, just stands still and flops over like that, that's Nova. Then of course the spider part can breathe pools of lava. She can use her fire sword. You can do the little fire stomp here. It's a variety of attacks. But as you can see, Quaylog's already down to ha less than half health. Like, with you and Mildred together, um, not so bad of a fight. That's the attack you want it to do, because it breathes lava for quite a while, allows you to get some good damage in. But now that lava is going to stay there for a while, so you want to be careful. You need to be mindful of where the lava is on the map, so you don't get stuck. Because it will deal a ton of damage to you if you walk into it. You can also walk under a lot of the uh, sword attacks. You don't have to dodge all of them. But Quaylog is dead. Not such a bad fight. Now we have the soul of Quaylog. This is the first boss that we kill where we get their soul as a consumable item. And uh, it works the same way as these ones. You can consume it to uh, get a lot of souls. Uh, or you can use it to create a unique weapon. So that that's how you actually get her weapon, the Quaylog's Fury Sword. You have to take her soul and apply it to a weapon of a specific categorization at a certain blacksmith. And then you can get her weapon. Uh, but that was the boss of Blight Town, and here is the- I mean, it may not look like it until you look up, but here is the lever for the second Bell of Awakening. Now we're being shown the surface again. And that is the structure behind the bonfire uh, that, that's above Andre. The one we saw Onion Bro sitting outside of. This is that structure, and it's called Sen's Fortress. 
And uh, now that we've rung both bells of awakening, the big old guy up there is raising the gate for us, the giant. Raising the gate for us by pulling on that chain. And so now we've unlocked access to the next level. For new players, Sense Fortress is kind of a nightmare. Not gonna lie. But again, I'll show you uh, how best to go about it. Uh, so you can come down this way. This area isn't just over after the boss fight. There's actually quite a bit to it. Um, right down here, there's a cool little platform. This turns into a shortcut later on once you unlock it. That way leads down into uh, an area known as the Demon Ruins. But here we have yet another illusory wall. This one right here is fake. And when you talk to this NPC here, his name is Engi, you need to say yes. If you say no by accident, he'll refuse to let you in, and then you'll have to murder him. <laughs> and there's not really any reason to do that, just say yes. So, our fair lady is this NPC, and when we talk to her, all we get is dot dot dot. She has her own covenant, but she doesn't talk to us. And the thing is that, she's it's not that she's not saying anything, it's that we can't understand her. At the beginning, I told you that one of the starting gifts is uh, a ring that lets you talk to an NPC, and this is that NPC. And this character is actually Quelag's sister. So, um, maybe it's good we can't understand each other, because then she might know that we just murdered a sister. Uh, but she's also a bonfire keeper. As you can see, the flame level is higher on this bonfire than the other ones, because it is being boosted by the bonfire keeper. So if we rest at it, we'll go back up to 10 Estes. And that is, that is nice. And then if we follow the main path down, I will just show you the beginning of the next area. What a reassuring and totally not creepy area this is. Demon Ruins. Another bonfire. Um, might seem silly to have this bonfire here because we just came from one, but again, it was behind an illusory wall. People might not find it, so it's good that they have this here. And if you walk over here, you get a view of the demon ruins. It's a ginormous open area. And there's just a ton of lava down there. And off the distance, you can actually see some flailing tentacles of another boss. And there's the fog gate to access the area. We are not going to get into that today, though. Just wanted to show you the start of this next section. So what we're going to do is we're going to level up. And we're going to call it a day. It's a little bit of endurance here. Yeah, it sounds good. Alright, thank you so much for watching this slow play. This slow let's play of Dark Souls Remastered. I hope you've been enjoying it. I hope it's been helping you. And I'll see you on the next one.